Hey folks, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we're taking a look at another knife by Real Steel. This is the E802 Horus. This knife has been out for, I think it's right around a year. Uh, or is it two years? I think it's a year. And I'm finally getting around to reviewing it. <laughs> I've carried this knife quite a lot. Um, I've carried it and used it so much that I've had to sharpen it a second time already. Which for a guy who has lots and lots of knives, that's quite unusual because I usually am constantly carrying new knives that I'm going to be reviewing and I don't really get to use other knives that much. And that tells you something about this knife, doesn't it? It should tell you that I like this knife. It carries very well and it's very comfortable for me and it's just something that seems to suit me quite well. Stonewash blade, my favorite finish on a blade. Uh, the colors are really nice, blue and black, and it's a full-size folder, not a flipper. Yeah, I like flippers. They're fun to play with, but to actually use, I really do like thumb stud knives. So I think uh, you're already intrigued enough that you're going to want to stick around for the full review. Two points of housekeeping to take care of before I get into this. I am definitely still working on doing my uh, cut test things so I can test uh, those steels on those knives, especially on knives like the Furios, um, the CT Smart, some of them, a bunch of other brands where you can't always be 100% sure if the steel is what they claim to be. I am working on that. I was doing so many cut tests. I went and talked to Pete again at Cedric and Ada Gear and Outdoors and found out that when he sharpens his stuff using his work sharp, which I have one of, I got a review of this tool if you want to watch that review. I'll put a link uh, down below in the description. But it turns out when he puts the convex grind on it using this, that uh, the edge will deteriorate more quickly than the V grind because I was cutting a 300 plus cuts and I still wasn't getting the edge dull enough. So, I'm going to go with the WorkSharp Edge and do some more tests. I won't actually make videos of everything because I was setting up the video camera, making the video and stuff, and that it takes three times as long to do a video than it is just to go and do the thing. So I'm just going to go and do some more tests, and I promise you that by the end of February, I'll definitely have some stuff out, but hopefully way before then, but that's my guarantee now by the end of February. Uh, the second thing that I want to talk about before I get started on this is my knives tend to come in in bunches. I don't know why. Well, I do sort of know why. Uh, my rep at GearBest, uh, when she sends me some knives, she usually sends me like uh, seven or eight at one time. <laughs> and then I have to wait. And then she sends again. And so I'm right now very low on stock on knives. That's why I don't have a Wee Wednesday knife for you today. And that's why I'm doing this real steel knife. I just don't have any more little guys <laughs> to share with you right now. So I'm going to try to get some more little guys to share with you. Uh, okay, back to the knife. This is a cool knife. I really like this knife. It's the E802 Horus. It's made, uh, designed by Uli Heineke. Um, that's what the UH is for, right? Right there. Right here, it's got the blade steel, 14C28N. Nice little sharpness trail, by the way. And then on this side, it says real steel, nice stone wash, high flat grind, almost high enough to be called a you know full flat grind. I'm really tempted to call it that, but technically, because there's this area here, that's you know the the thickness of the blade stock here so it's a big flat area here so it's not a full flat grind it's high saber grind if you will and what we've got is a drop point it's really neat i was looking up at the real steel website and they're calling this a sunset bow curvature that's what this is called uh, you might be familiar with that shape from a bunch of spiderco knives they've got that kind of shape a little more accented and then, of course, Ganzo copied them. They've got a lot of that shape, too. Sort of, they're more dramatic, ending sort of in a sheep's foot at the front. Sunset bow curvature is what they're calling it. Kind of neat. Nice thick blade stock. Really 
thick blade liners compared to what a lot of knives have. Ah, I have to insert this. I recorded this after I was almost done editing because I made a mistake. I mentioned a couple of months ago how I don't like to view other people's video reviews of knives before I do my own review. And the reason basically is because I don't want their ideas to impact how I do my review. I want to check out my knife, use my knife, do my review, and after I'm finished my review, then I might consider watching other people's reviews and see if what they found and thought, you know, lines up with what I found and thought. But instead, I messed up. I watched Kevin Cleary's video on the E802 Horus, and his ideas about how thick the liners are impacted my thinking, even though I wasn't consciously trying to let that happen or get that to happen. And so I was talking about, as you just heard, how thick these liners are. But check this out. Do you remember my review of this? This is the Boker Plus FR Coca Polo. Here's this knife. The liners are the same thickness. Yes, seriously, those, the liners are almost the same, almost the same thickness. It's a very small, small, small difference. Uh, 1.55 millimeters, 1.51 millimeters thick. <laughs> and so it just goes to show how reviewers need to be objective. And to be objective, we simply have to force ourselves to use our own thinking, our own ideas, examine knives, look at them, do our reviews, instead of just repeating what we hear. So even if we don't want to repeat what we hear, it still happens. And so I'm recommitting myself again to not watching other people's reviews of knives before I do my own reviews. The fact is I measured a bunch of my knives. There's actually a fair bit of them that are 1.5 millimeters thick. Uh, there's a lot of them that are about 1.1 millimeters thick as well, but 1.5 millimeters thick is not unusual at all. It just seems very thick, and I think it seems extra thick because of this. See how it's these steps going thinner and thinner here? The handle scales keep getting thinner and thinner, and having really thin handle scales at the edge help emphasize the liners, and then the liners seem thicker in comparison, and then all of a sudden our brain is telling us that this is unusually thick liner. But it's not an unusually thick liner. This is basically the same thing. And this, you look at it and go, wow, that's a nice little thin liner. I wonder if it's too thin. <laughs> it's all about perspective optical tricks. So two things are going on here. Uh, one is measuring things helps you to determine reality much better than just looking at it. And listening to other people's opinions before you've made your own often helps to skew your own opinion as well. Let's keep going back to the review. G10 in here, it's layered blue and black, and you can get it in just black or a black and a dark gray kind of, so it's got a, a very slight two-tone between black and really dark gray. We've got these hollow pillars back here. This is a hollow pillar that goes all the way through. You can see my finger behind there. Same kind here on the pivot, and that's the two things that you've got. And then you've got a stop pin that just sort of sits in there, so that's not used to hold it together. I really like these hollow pillars. They're really nice. Uh, not only are they strong, and they really are strong, they're also, uh, they have a good decorative effect as well. By the way, this hole is not big enough for lanyards, for 550 paracord. You might, if you really, really struggle, you can get empty paracord shell, like you take all the the white little cords out from the inside, the seven strand paracord, you take those seven strands out and just have the casing. You might be able to get the casing through there if you want to do that. But then you've got a really wide space here that you're tying it around. If you want to tie it just around this post, because you really want a lanyard because there's no other lanyard hole, uh, you can do that. Uh, I tried it for a little while and the blade just barely missed it. I didn't cut into the uh, paracord when I had mine, but I didn't carry it very long. I'm thinking if it just comes slightly loose, it's going to start getting in contact with that sharp edge and you're going to start cutting your paracord. So I don't think this is lanyard um, compatible at all, really. 
but it looks really nice. Pocket clip, right and left pocket clip. I really would have liked if they would put a nice little filler in here, a little bit more attention to detail, but you got a nice deep carry pocket clip that's not too huge. So I like the size of this pocket clip. I like that it's a deep pocket clip and I like that it's right and left. Tip up, of course. That's a really good thing. And we've got, um, oh, the, the, the blade steel, you've got a nice hard rock well on there, 59, 60, depending on how hard they harden it. It can go past 60, depending on who does the, how they do the heat treat. Ball bearings, which are nice. And I'll take the handle scales off and I'll show you the skeletonizing. You can sort of see it right there. If you look carefully on the liner, ed inside edge right there, you can see some holes. The other side has got some very, very minor skeletonizing, one little hole right about there. But I'll let you see that. That helps it to lose a little bit of weight, which is very, very necessary because if it didn't have any of that skeletonizing, this thing would get a little bit too heavy. So let's take a look at those right now. So there you go, not bad. Thumb studs. I like thumb stud knives. So easy to deploy the knife. Uh, you never have to get that position just right. You don't have to change the position of your hand very much. You just flip it and you're done. These thumb studs are quite nice. Uh, you may have seen them before. Where have you seen those before? Do you recognize those thumb studs? I'll show you. There you go. That's where you've seen them before. This is this uh, San Remu Land, or the Land 910 Plus, and you've got the same thumb studs. Not bad. I don't know, might as well do a little bit of comparison between these two knives if you want to for a brief second. Uh, bigger knife, hardier knife, sturdier knife, better steel. Let's talk about the handle for a minute. The handle has one little weird feature on it, and that's this front piece here. Most people would call that section a choil, but look how big it is. Uh, when you go to hold the knife, uh, do you put two fingers up there? You don't put half a finger, that's not comfortable right there. So you either put two fingers in that section, and then you've got a really sneak up kind of hold. I should do a little wider angle. So you can put your two fingers in there and have that kind of hold. Or you can put your one finger up there and your other three back in this section. And then you got this hold. And this hold is very comfortable. It's the most comfortable hold that you have. It's for reaching out really far. You gotta reach out and touch someone or something. <laughs> that That's a very comfortable hold. The thumb rests in this rest area very well. Really nice, comfortable hold. And when you move forward and you put two fingers up in here, then you've got a spot. Well, for me, I, I can put my thumb back here. Yeah, I got a little, almost a double jointedness in there. And so my thumb can bend and it sits in there really well. Or you can reach out a little bit and put it in this sort of hollow area right there. There's no um, jimping on the knife at all. I wish there was just a little bit of gentle jimping on the spine of the blade. That would really help with these grips to, to get us a, a grip that where your thumb, thumb's not going to slide at all. Not that it's really slidey, but you know it's a little bit sort of that way. But you got these two really good grip options. At least I like them both. Um, so big long reach. You've got a secondary lock right here. And that lock, if it's engaged, it uh, slides forward to engage. So it's this little slider right here. When it slides forward, it pushes a little bit of a tab in front of the uh, liner lock here, and it stops you from disengaging the liner lock. Some of you are going to be curious on how this lock works. So I took the knife apart to show you. So there's the lock, the slider part with a little bit of friction. You can slide it back and forth. So when it's off, notice this little piece of metal right there. And there's a notch put into this frame, the frame lock arm. And it can just go past it and 
doesn't have any effect at all. When you engage the lock, that goes forward, and now the frame lock arm touches that little tab, and it can't go any further than that. And so you try to undo the lock, pushing it that way, and you can't go any further because that little tab that you can just barely see right now, that tab right there, is in the way. So you undo the lock, and now it goes past no problem. Engage the lock, and it touches the frame lock arm. So that's how that lock works. Some people are going to like that feature. Uh, I don't really care for it. It's not a huge negative, except for when I accidentally engage it. Um, you know, when it's back here and I'm using the knife, and if I do slide my thumb at all to move to the forward position, I tend to turn it on, and then I have to remember to turn it back off again. So, in a sense, I dislike it, but it's not a huge dislike. It's it's a kind of minor thing. For those people who really like it, hey, it's a really good lock. It's sort of nondescript. It's It's kind of hidden. It's not big and obvious. It's a reasonable little lock. And there you have it. There's a little bit of jimping on it. So it's easy to engage and disengage. No problem there at all. I just wish the detent on it was a little bit stronger so I wouldn't accidentally turn it on. And very good engagement for a new knife, and especially since I've used it for quite a while already. And, you know, it works good, looks good. So let's talk about the dimensions now. We'll zoom in a little bit for that. Cutting edge, 9.37 centimeters. That's 3.7 inches. Blade length, 9.11 centimeters, which is 3.59. Blade thickness is 3.5 millimeters. That's 0.14 of an inch. The uh, blade depth, 3.12 centimeters. That's uh, 1.23 inches, so almost an inch and a quarter. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, 0.61 millimeters, which is 0 0.024 inches. Not bad. Makes it very robust and a very strong cutting edge. And with the uh, 14C28N, you've got uh, an edge that's very, very robust. Handle length, 12.49 centimeters. That's 4.92 inches. So basically, you've got a 5-inch handle which is nice and full size. I, you, my hands are large, bordering on extra large. And so people with extra large hands are going to find this knife comfortable. And I think people with just regular large hands, even some guys with medium sized hands are going to find this knife fairly comfortable. Uh, the grip area, so on this side, and that's measured from where my thumbnail is right there to right where that one is. 10.4 centimeters, 4.09 inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 1.46 centimeters, which is 0.575 inches. The handle depth, and that's this measurement, right at this spot, 2.72 centimeters, 1.07 inches. The total length of the knife when it's open is 8.58 inches. How much does it weigh? We're finally to that point. 145 grams, 5.12 ounces. So it's just over 5 ounces if they would not have skeletonized this liner. <laughs> it would be at that level that people are going to start to dislike it because it's going to be considered too heavy. So just over 5 ounces, not bad at all, especially for this large of a knife, a little over 8.5 inches. Very comfortable in hand. How much does this knife sell for? Well, if you go to the realsteelknives.com website, they're selling this for $74.50. It's come down a little bit since it's about a year old now in the marketplace. There's a number of places in the U.S. That was U.S. dollars, by the way. There's a number of places in the United States that you can get it for $59.60. Uh, I forgot to mention, there's also the um, E802 Horus free version. And what is the free version? It still costs the same amount of money, but instead of thumb studs, it has a nail nick. So it's a two-hand opening system. So when you see a real steel knife and it's got the word free in the name of it, 
that's because it's got a nail neck two hand opening. In Canada, uh, Blades Canada, also known as Warriors and Wonders, they've only had this exact knife, the black and blue one with the thumb studs. They're out of stock right now. I've written to them and asked them if they're going to be getting more in stock ever or if they're considering that or not. And uh, if they get back to me before I'm done editing, I'll have that information on the screen right here to inform you about that. Also in the description below, I'll have links for them. Uh, it cuts very, very well. I still have to be quite careful with my cutting because my hand is very sore <laughs> from uh, what I talked about uh, initially when I got to the tabletop mode. And that's the, um, the cut test that I've been doing. Whew, the arthritis in my hands gets tired really, really quickly. But the knife is really, really nice. It keeps that sharpness very, very well. We've got some manila rope here. Cuts through that very, very easily. No problem at all. It's, uh, you know, this is quarter inch manila rope. Very abrasive, rough rope. It, it really works on the edge of a knife badly. You can cut through that, no problem. Even after that, you know, it still cuts really, really well. Straight into paper is a hard thing to do. Usually people just do this kind of thing. That's much easier to do than just going straight down and cutting. Cut tests, I really don't think that they mean very much at all because um, the little bit that I'm doing on screen here really doesn't show how well it performs. It's just sort of a little bit of an introduction showing you that a knife is actually sharp. <laughs> um, so there you go. That's probably why a lot of knife reviewers don't even do cut tests because it really doesn't tell you much. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching my little video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, guys, always cut towards your chump, not your thumb.